Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another nicely performing ARM-based PC to take a look at today. This one is a Chromebook. This is the HP X360 13.3 and it is powered by a MediaTek Companio 1300 processor. And we're gonna take a closer look at the performance that this machine delivers in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $500, give or take. One thing to note as we go through the review is that this model has a slightly faster processor than the entry level version in this X360 Chromebook line. So you will see, especially on the games, probably a 10 or 15% performance boost on this one versus the base model. But beyond that, everything should be pretty close in its overall performance and battery life. Now this is a two in one which means that you can use it like a laptop, like we have it configured right now, but it can also flip into display mode here, and then of course flip into a tablet configuration, and then you can also do the tent thing uh, with it as well. So it's got that two-in-one functionality. It works with USI pens, but HP did not provide us with a pen for this review, so we won't be looking at that today. However, Chrome OS is getting pretty good with pen interfaces, and although the software isn't as extensive as it is on the iPad and on Windows, it is a pretty nice pen experience overall. Now it's equipped with a 16 by 9, 13.3 inch 1080p touch display. This is running at around 250 nits, so it's about what you typically see on a low-end laptop, but it looks fine for doing day-to-day -day basic tasks. Now this comes in at just under three pounds or 1.36 kilograms. The build quality though is not great. There's a lot of flex to this plastic here. And as I'm just doing this, I can actually feel the mouse clicking as I move the laptop up and down here. So picking the laptop up is not going to be the nicest feeling. Another thing I notice is that if I push down on the keyboard here, there's a lot of flex as you can see to the keys as you push down. So the quality here is not spectacular. The webcam is a 720p camera. Not the best picture quality out of it either. This is some of the compromises that you get on these lower end laptops, but you do have a shutter mechanism here for physically blocking the lens, so you don't need to put tape over it. And then on the keyboard here, you also have a key that will disable the microphone with just a button push. So there are some creature comforts here that are kind of nice. The keyboard beyond the flexing is okay. I would have liked slightly larger keyboards. We typically see larger keyboards on Chromebooks, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, but there is decent travel to the keys as you're typing, so I think it'll work out pretty well. The keyboard is backlit too. I'm also not crazy about the trackpad. It does feel a bit springy to me, and of course it is clicking even when I just pick the laptop up like this. So I was expecting a little better build quality here, especially given the price point of this particular laptop. But you do get a good number of ports on this one. So on the left-hand side, we have a full-size USB 3 port. Next to it is a full-service USB Type-C port. So this will do video out in addition to power in, and it supports USB-C and USB data devices. So you could plug this into a docking station, for example. This will output 4K at 60 Hertz, although it only supports one external display at a time. Next to that, you've got your power switch and your volume rocker there. On the other side, we have a headphone microphone jack, another full service USB-C port, and an SD card slot. So you can power it on either side, but remember only one display is supported as an external one with this laptop. Now it does have Wi-Fi 6 on board and connected to my Wi-Fi 6 access point in the ceiling. I'm pulling down about 500 megabits per second and we could probably get the same in the other direction as well. So overall, good Wi-Fi performance out of this and of course you can always attach an ethernet dongle to it if you want to go hardwired and they do offer a gigabit dongle that you can purchase separately. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll begin with some web browsing and then go up from there. And we'll start here by loading up the Chrome browser and visiting the nasa.gov homepage. And as you can see, things spring up here pretty quickly. It's rendering 
pretty efficiently. You have the use of the touch screen here, although the screen does bounce around a little bit when you're uh, navigating with it. But still, I think the performance here is quite nice and actually feels a little better than it would on a low-end Intel processor that we typically see on Chromebooks at around this price point. So a nice performance boost here for doing some of the basic work. And as you'll see in a few minutes, it'll do pretty well at some other things too. Now we ran the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test in Google Chrome, and there we got a score of 76.56. And that was actually pretty close to an eighth generation i5 Intel idea pad from Lenovo that we looked at a couple of years ago. That's pretty impressive out of one of these lower end ARM chips. And it's certainly faster than the Asus L210, which is powered by a Gemini Lake refresh processor from Intel that we usually see in these Chromebooks. So it's a nice boost in performance here, not only for web browsing, but for some other stuff too. Let's take a look now at YouTube. And here we didn't have as great a result. It did play back 1080p 60 video just fine, but it was dropping frames occasionally. I didn't notice it in the playback, but on the statistics panel there, we were seeing a pretty regular dropping of frames as the video was playing back. So not perfect playback, but not all that noticeable, at least to me as I was watching it. Now, Chromebooks all have access to the Google Play Store these days, and you'll find HBO and Netflix and Disney Plus available for download there. However, I recommend whenever possible, to watch video on those services using the Chrome browser. And the reason is, is that the Android version of those media apps do not support 1080p video on Chromebooks here. So you have that high resolution display, but if you watch HBO Max, for example, through their Android app, the best you're gonna get is 480p, basically standard definition. And this is due to the digital rights management issues that the Android uh, overlay here is still not caught up on yet. So if you can, uh, watch it on the browser. Although if you are downloading for offline viewing, you'll need to do that through the Android app most of the time. Now, one of the advantages of a Chromebook with an ARM processor is that you'll find better compatibility with Android apps, especially Android games. So this is Call of Duty Mobile that's running great on here. As you can see, I also have my uh, Xbox controller paired up and everything seems to be working pretty well here. So you shouldn't find any real big issues playing games on Chromebooks, even with a game controller. Just note that a lot of Android games don't support the controller and you might have to very clumsily use this large screen as a touch surface. But overall, good Android compatibility and certainly better than what you would see with an Intel-based Chromebook. Now, another thing I tested out here is the GeForce Now service. In the box, you'll get a coupon for a free trial, and this lets you play some of your Steam library or your Epic Games library on a cloud server that is run by NVIDIA. Not every game supports this, but uh, games like No Man's Sky here, which I purchased on Steam a while ago, uh, do run great on here, as you can see. Now, this is not running locally on the Chromebook. We are streaming this from NVIDIA, but it looks great and it plays great. And the Wi-Fi 6 here seems to be able to keep up with the network demands. This is a uh, very high bitrate activity here, but as you can see, it's working quite nicely. And I'm also getting uh, force feedback on the controller. So the rumble on the controller is working here when I execute my jetpack, for example, and all in, it's a really nice experience here, streaming games off of GeForce Now. Other streaming services like the Xbox Cloud Gaming should work with this just fine. And there are also in-home game streaming apps that you can run on a Chromebook like this one and get uh, very similar experiences. So if you are someone with a pretty deep PC games library, you can uh, play those games streaming from another computer, even though this one doesn't have the horsepower to run those games directly. Now, I was really impressed with its game emulation performance. We've got the Android version of the Dolphin emulator running here, and Wave Race is running pretty much at its full speed at 30 frames per second here with the default settings for the emulator. And of course, my game controller is working as well. Very, very playable here. Now, not every GameCube game is going to run as nice as this one, but this does give you an idea as to what its performance potential is. I also ran a Dreamcast emulator, and that worked extremely well too. So a lot of power uh, baked into this ARM chip here because it does have a pretty decent GPU on board. 
So I think even on the lower end model, you should see some good performance out of this. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 6,658. It bests the NVIDIA Shield on that test in some areas, especially when it comes to its CPU performance. And its onboard graphics for Android games and emulators is right up there with the Shield. So this has a lot of potential, especially if you are into game emulation or just Android gaming in general. Now the speakers on this one are downward firing. You've got one on the left and the right here. It'll sound different depending on what it's resting on and in what orientation the laptop is in. So it doesn't sound bad though. It's got a good range of sound, but of course you can attach headphones to it either through the headphone jack or over Bluetooth. Now one of my favorite features of Chromebooks is the ability to boot up Linux applications and run those apps alongside all the other things you can run on your Chromebook. So here we are uh, in the command line, but I can also download other applications like LibreOffice here, which is a full on office suite, very similar to Microsoft Office and you can operate this completely off the cloud and just locally on the computer. So you could turn off the internet and still have a lot of functionality out of your Chromebook. And at the same time, you can load up your Chrome OS browser here and have your Linux applications all running together. This is where you probably want to get a Chromebook with a little more memory. So the base model of this one comes with four gigabytes. This one that we're looking at today has eight. So that will allow for more of these things to run alongside each other without a performance hit. And overall, I'm really pleased with its performance, even if you have a bunch of stuff going at the same time. This is completely fanless because this is a more power efficient ARM processor. And the battery life is pretty good on this too. If you're sticking to the browser and keeping the display brightness down, you're gonna get about 10 to 11 hours out of this in my testing. You will, of course, get less battery life if you're working that GPU harder, like playing games. But I think for what most people do with one of these Chromebooks, you're going to get a good amount of battery life out of this and certainly get through a workday without a problem. Now, all Chromebooks, no matter which manufacturer you get them from, have an end of support date where Google stops pushing down software updates to the computer. This one's date is June of 2030 which is eight years from the time in which I am recording this video. So if you were to buy this new a year or two from now, the date is static, it doesn't change. So just keep that in mind, June of 2030 for this particular Chromebook and its updates. Overall, I am very impressed with its performance and its battery life. These new MediaTek processors are excellent and a very nice match for the Chrome operating system. I do wish the build quality on this was a little better, but beyond that, I think it's a really nice Chromebook for people looking for something that's a little more powerful than the typical Intel Chromebook you might see at around this price point. That is gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.